Greetings, AML family. Thank you guys for tuning in today. Today is a joyous occasion. I came all the way down to Kathleen Hood to do this update. How you doing today, Kathleen? I'm good. I'm good. That's great to hear that. You got work today? Yes, I do. Oh, okay. Yes, I do. You got your uniform on, shop right, yeah. employee. Yep. I'm so happy that you still holding on to that job, Kathleen. That I work is, a lot. Okay, that's good, right? That keeps you busy, and that's what you like to do, stay busy? Yeah. Yes. What, what about the new job? What do you like about it so far? I like it. I like the people I work with. Um, they trust me. I run the front end sometimes. Um, you know, I, I like it. I like it. That's good. Well, that makes me happy hearing that, you know, you like your job. So, your one year is coming up. What? When is it going to be? April. Two months. Two months away. Congratulations, girl. How do you feel? I feel good. I feel, I feel really good. I feel great. Um, you know, just get better every day, I guess. I agree. What you, what you used to tell me before any day, your best day, I I, I I said my worst day in recovery is better than my my best day in addiction. Yeah. And I never forgot that. That always mm -hmm. stuck in my mind. So let's do a little throwback and catch people up who haven't, you know, checked out your previous story or your previous, you know, interviews. Let's start off with where you was born and raised. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the far northeast. Okay, so let's talk about addiction, right? How old were you when you first started using drugs? Depends on what kind of drugs. I mean, I was smoking weed and stuff at like 13, but I didn't get into like a, like serious addiction until I was like 19. You know, I mean, prior to that, I guess I just tried what everybody else tried recreationally, but you know. Um, everybody doesn't have, you know, the disease of addiction where, you know, they don't know when to put it down and when to stop. You know, it consumes them. Um, I have the disease of addiction, you know what I mean? Um, plenty of people I grew up with and I'm still friends with, you know, like we would do stuff recreationally and they were able to just put it down. I always did it to the max. So you started out smoking weed? Yeah. What made your addiction progress? I don't know. I mean, I guess when I was 19, um, I discovered Kensington and, you know, I started smoking crack and, you know, it just went downhill from there. Like, I did other drugs recreationally, knew how to put them down, but once I tried crack, it was, you know. It was a game changer, right? Yeah, absolutely. That was the case for so many other people. So let's talk about high school what was high school like for you paint us a picture because you know that's a tough i mean high school and my childhood it was great like you know maybe at the time i might, I might be like oh i got the worst life ever but looking back i had a great childhood a great you know growing up like just growing up period i had three sisters we lived in a good neighborhood i had good friends i went to good schools um I had a good life, you know, we were middle class, but I had a good life, like I didn't want for nothing, you know, my parents both worked their asses off, you know, bills might have been behind, but they always made it work, you know what I mean, I never knew that they struggled if they did, you know. Got you. Did you graduate high school? Yes. What about college? No. Did you go to college? No. No college? No. So, what happened next after high school? I told you, I discovered Kensington when I was 19, and, you know, I mean, I've had clean time, you know, um, I've never, up until, I would say, maybe three years ago, I never did rehab, I would just go home and get clean, but, um, you know, life changes, I've, I've had significant clean time, but, you know, um, maybe because I didn't do rehab and I wasn't, like, technically in recovery, maybe that's why it didn't work, I guess, that's what, um, you know. That's what I'm imagining, so I recently, you know, went to mm -hmm. rehab. Well, that's great. You finally, you know, made up your mind, decided to do it, and you're doing the thing. So tell me about the moment in your life where you decided you wanted to get clean. 
I know, it was in Kensington. It was April last year, and um, I was just tired. It was like, you know, I remember thinking in my head, I'm either, it's either I'm going to leave and, you know, and go to rehab, like I keep saying I'm going to do, or I'm going to die out here. So I chose to go to rehab. And that was the best decision? Absolutely. Right, absolutely. Made. Yes, absolutely. So what made you ultimately decide you wanted to get clean? How many attempts did it take you to get where you're at right now? I mean, I've been clean multiple times. Usually when I say I'm going to get clean, I go get clean, you know, and I, um, I'll stay clean. But like I said, um, I think like I just usually did it on my own. So recently, I, you know, um, I'm, I'm guessing it just, you know, I'm trying a different route. So I'm going the whole recovery way, you know, doing rehab, recovery house, meetings, hopefully, you know, because I don't know what makes me pick up or, you know, why I ultimately just decide to stop, but. Right. So now we're here in the month of February. How is the relationship with you and your family now? Good, good. We're still rebuilding, but good. Um, I talk to my sisters, you know, regularly. Um, it's good. I, I talk to my family members. It's good. What about your daughter? Um, I haven't really spoke to her yet. She knows I'm in recovery. I'm in a recovery house. I'm doing good. I'm working. Um, you know, like I'll relay messages and I know she gets the messages because she'll tell her my mom about it. My sister definitely will tell her like, mom, he says she loves you. And you know, she's still doing good. Um, she just wants to take it slower this time because you know, again, like I was back in my daughter's life last year and then I messed up. So, you know, she's protecting my daughter. You know, I get it. Right. Nobody did this but me, so now I just I have to wait and fix it. Mhm. Mm and you're doing everything you're supposed to be doing to, you know, have access to your daughter again, to gain the trust of your family. You're doing all the right things, so just know that we are proud of you and we are rooting for you. So now, how has life been now since you're on the other side? How has it been since you've got clean? Um, it's good, you know, I'll say I think it's better this time. Um, I relocated out of Philadelphia. Um, I think it's a good decision. I like it up here. You know, it's like, it's everywhere in Philadelphia. I mean, mostly, mainly in Kensington, but no matter where you live at in the city, you see the addiction and all. You don't see it as much up here, you know. I don't see needles, caps or anything thrown all over. Um, so it's, it's good, like, you know, like a, it just gets better every day. So how do you deal with cravings when, when they come around? I don't, I haven't really had any cravings. Um, you know, I, when I tend to think about when I was out there in addiction, I just remember how bad it got. And every time I relapse, it gets worse and worse, you know, so. And that always sticks in your mind, remind you. Yeah, it keeps me grounded. It makes me not want to go back. Right, keep going forward. If you yeah. look back, just look back to see how far you have come, but never reset that clock again because you know how hard it took you to get where you're at right now, right? Yes. So what was the lowest point of your addiction, would you say? Kensington, I mean, the whole addiction itself. I mean, you know, like I said, every time I relapse, it just it gets worse and worse. It never gets easier. But um, so I, I guess I'm going to have to go with my last, you know, my last time down Kensington. It doesn't get easier. It just gets worse. Exactly. Especially with the current state that you know, the drugs are in right now, it's just death now out there, even with the lifestyle, the drugs, right? Yes, absolutely. So what, what is the highest point in your life right now being clean? What is the highest point being sober? Um, I mean, I guess my, the highest point in my life when I was in, in, so, in sobriety, probably when I had my daughter and I was a mother, I mean, but my life is still good, you know, I'm working you know, mm -hmm. working, maintaining. Um, I laugh now, you know. All right. So let's go in the back end. This is a general question. Where do you think addiction starts from? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's, that's hard to say, you know. Trauma. 
you know, trauma is a is a um, big thing for people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, I've had trauma due to addiction, but prior to addiction, I didn't have trauma. You know what I mean? Um, I had a great life. You know, um, I don't really know. I just think some people, you know, can recreationally use and put it down, and other people can't. You know. So, yeah, you have a teenage daughter. What advice would you give to the future generation? Um, I guess, you know, not everybody, you know, it's, it, you know, I think a lot of kids use because of peer pressure, their friends are doing it, um, and it's not worth it, you know, I've, my daughter knows she suffered, you know, that I've suffered from the disease of addiction and, you know, she could easily have that trait, you know what I mean, um, I would just advise them, you know, be your own person and don't, don't do what your other friend, what your friends are doing, just to follow along, just be yourself. Facts. And what advice do you have for those who are in recovery just like you but still got the cravings? Um, it just it gets better day by day. You know, they will eventually, you know, not completely go away, but they, I guess, it, like, subside, like, where you don't have them as much anymore. You know, it gets easier and easier and life gets better, you know. Day by day, you can start living your life more. Like, I have a good life. I laugh every day, you know, go to work, come home, and you know live a normal life right that's awesome so so everything that you have been through Kathleen what has it taught you about life don't give up you know um, I know a lot of times when you're out there you feel like you just can't do it and that, that you're gonna die out there but um you know anybody can recover you know you just have to want it enough and don't give up right keep trying when you're not working, what do you do to occupy your time? Um, I'm usually off like one day a week, so like I'll do my wash, uh, usually cook, um, clean my room, you know, catch up on my shows, just relax. And now what, what is your long-term goals for the future? Um, I'm going to start looking for my own place, you know, just to get out of the recovery house. You know, um, it's almost a year. I think a year is good enough and, that, you know, it's time to move on. So do you have the confidence in yourself to not go back to the life? Yeah, I, I, don't, I, I still don't want to go back to the city. I like it up here out of the city. Um, I like my job, so I'm going to look around this area. Okay, that's great to hear. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people have been riding with you from day one and have been rooting for you. Who all would you like to give a shout out to? Um, well, the whole AML family, you know, every, your words of encouragement and support mean the world to me, but especially Mary Packer, Brother Ron, Deb, Mark, you know, that's just to name a few, but everybody. Yo, shout out to the AML family. You guys are making a difference in people's life and I want you to continue doing that never stop lifting people up when they're down because they can get they, they need your strength to you know pull them up so Kathleen we about to wrap things up what are some things that you're in need of now Kathleen uh always in need of rent and I guess clothes because I've gained quite a lot of weight so clothes yeah okay guys so you know if you want to say anything for Kathleen I'm going to, you know, the P.O. Box link is in the description. And also, too, I'm going to put her cash, I mean, her Venmo and her email, her PayPal, so you guys can, you know, help her with what you can. Because, you know, she still needs support. Kathleen, is there anything else you would like to add before we clock out? Don't let these bad people in the world get you down, you know. Use inspiring me every day and you let me know there's still good people in the world awesome that is phenomenal and you are phenomenal kathleen aml family i want to tell the lovely kathleen thank you so much for giving us this positive update and we're here for her always and we'll continue rooting for you all right so i just want to let you know that you are truly an inspiration and we could not be prouder of you so don't quit don't be better be better all right so guys until next time mal kathleen we out there peace out peace.
Love me down 